Hey friends, welcome to Flight Test Tech. I'm Josh. Today we're going to be showing you how to build the Scout XL wing. Now this wing is meant specifically for the Scout XL, but along with that we're also going to be releasing in the future other designs that are extra large versions of some previous models. Now in many of those designs, the build process you see here is going to be the exact same. So we're going to be using this video not only for the Scout XL, but possibly also future designs like the Simple Cub XL, the Turbo Tutor XL, and many more to come. The tools that we're going to need for this build are going to be our hot glue gun, plenty of hot glue sticks, some packaging tape, and a barbecue skier. Let's go ahead and get our materials in order, we'll pop out our pieces, and we'll get started. Before we start here, we're going to go ahead and pop out all of our pieces, we're going to identify them, and then we're going to go ahead and weed them out and make sure that the different areas that need channels or popped out pieces are all addressed, and then we'll go ahead and let you pause the video and make sure your pieces look just like ours. First we have our dihedro gauge right here. Right here we have our right and our left wing. We have both of our main spars and we also have our trailing edge spars. Once we have all these pieces identified, we're gonna start with our main and our rear spar here. We're gonna weed out the channels where our foam is gonna fold over for both our A-fold and our C-folds. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our razor blade and we're gonna cut down at least two thirds through the foam just above the paper. I always like to doll the tip of my razor blade to make sure that we don't cut through the paper. We're gonna score all the score lines this way and that way when it comes time to fold and remove that channel, it'll pop out real easily. Now that we've scored all of our cuts, we can fold it over 180 degrees, and with a simple rotation, the foam will pop right out. Feel free to pause your video to make sure all your pieces look just like this. If any of your channels have any leftover foam in there and need to be cleaned out, you can easily do so by using the edge of your razor blade. Now that we have all these channels removed, let's go ahead and do both our A-folds and our C-folds. We'll start first with the rear spar here and we'll do our C-fold. A C-fold is simply where the bottom and the top piece go 180 degrees over to meet to each other and at least a nice strong paper seam on the back. We always try to do a test fit before we do any gluing just to make sure that there's no built up foam and then also we have the muscle memory exactly what we need to do before we put the glue down. With our hot glue, I like to set my hot glue temperature just a little bit below medium. That gives us plenty of time to work, but also keeps the glue a little bit on the cooler side, keeping it nice and smooth. I'm gonna lay a nice even bleed of glue, starting and stopping about a half inch from the edge. And I'll also put a very thin ribbon of glue right on the paper. Fold this over 180 degrees. Just line that up. Keep in mind that the glue temperature will pass through the paper easier than will the foam. So just make sure you don't burn yourself. And then we're gonna use the table as our friend and just press down nice and flat and hold it there for about 30 seconds. That's one spar down, let's go ahead and do the other side. And we're just gonna do a practice fold, make sure we're happy with the way everything fits. A bead of glue on the top, starting and stopping a half inch from the edge and a thin ribbon of glue right on the paper. Fold it over. And we'll press down. All right, both our rear spars are done. Let's go ahead and put that aside and we'll start working on the A-folds of our main spars. Now a proper A-fold is where the side plates, either here or here, are above the bottom or top plate of your fold. To do a proper A-fold, we're gonna keep the side plates of our piece firmly against the table and we're gonna rotate the bottom or top plate up 90 degrees. This is really handy to also have a triangle square just to make sure that we keep everything nice and perpendicular. So we're gonna do a quick practice fold here. We're happy with the way that fits. And now we're gonna focus our glue on the bottom of the side plate, starting and stopping about a half inch from the edge. Fold this up 90 degrees. It's always nice just to check for perpendicular. And we're gonna make sure that we push this against the table to get a nice crisp edge. Now that we have one side down, we're gonna practice the second side. Again, we're keeping the side plate firmly against the table as we rotate the bottom plate up 90 degrees. That looks really good. We still have plenty of glue in our hot glue gun. So now we're gonna focus the majority of the glue on the very bottom of the side plate. Again, starting and stopping a half inch from the edge. We'll rotate up against the table. Check for square and then press firmly against the table until the glue is fully dry. One spar down, one to go. And same process as before, side plates firmly against the table, rotate 90, we're happy with the fit. Almost out of glue here, I think I got one more in me. There's that. 
we'll go up 90. Now that we have one side down, we're gonna practice the second side. Again, we're keeping the side plate firmly against the table as we rotate the bottom plate up 90 degrees. So now we're gonna focus the majority of the glue on the very bottom of the side plate. Again, starting and stopping a half inch from the edge. The easiest way to tell if you have the right orientation for your A-folds and B-folds is when you look at the diagram that's been laser etched into your foam, if you look at the cross section, you'll notice that it looks just like your diagram. Now that we have our main and our rear spars assembled, let's go ahead and put these aside and we'll do our double bevel cuts of the leading edge of our wings. The way we're gonna identify our leading edge is it's gonna be right at the point where the bottom surface of the wing meets the top. In this case, it's gonna be this seam right here. So we're just simply gonna crack this open 180 degrees and making sure our razor blade is nice and sharp. If you're building along with us and you're using our crafty kit knife, we're gonna open this up to the second detent like you see here. What this does is it gives us the ability to have the knife at the proper angle to easily cut it. For our score cut, we're gonna make sure that the edge of our razor blade is just above the paper. And we'll easily glide this right along all the way through. Cool, and same process on the other side. And whenever you're doing a double bevel cut, it's incredibly important that you can easily raise up one edge of the wing at least 90 degrees. If it doesn't go up 90 degrees, odds are it's gonna to be too tight in this area here and your wing's not gonna fold together or shape properly. As you can see, we can go up 90 degrees easily. We have one wing done, let's go ahead and do our bevel on the other side. Now we have our double bevels cut, let's go ahead and start installing our rear and our main spar. Now as I mentioned in the opening, this wing is for our Scout XL, but many of our other XL designs are going to build the exact same way. So if you're building a plane like maybe the Turbo Tudor XL or you're building the Simple Cub XL or many other designs that are yet to come, this process will be very similar, although the wing looks different. The only major difference is sometimes our rear spar is going to be attached through a C-fold on the trailing edge of our bottom surface of our wing. The first spar that we're going to mount is going to be our trailing edge spar. We're going to make sure that the paper faces out towards the outside. It's just going to give it a very nice finished edge. We'll be able to fold that up right here. We're going to line that up with the very back of the trailing edge of the bottom surface of our wing. Once we're happy with that, we'll rotate it over 180 degrees. Got to put a new glue stick in my glue gun here. And a simple bead all the way down, starting and stopping about a half inch from the edge. And we're just gonna make sure that we're flush on both sides and we're flush with the trailing edge on the back. Now that we have our trailing edge spar glued in, let's go ahead and line up our main spar. And the big thing we're gonna be looking for is where our servo holes are and these edge marks that are on the wings here and here and here and here. Making sure our notches line up, our servo slots line up, and that we're in between the edge marks. We're gonna do a quick test fit to make sure everything looks good. Once we're happy with that, we'll rotate this over 180 degrees. And we'll place glue on the spar. Now I'll repeat the same process here. We're gonna slide this right over. Again, lining up between the sketch marks, our servo hole, and the etch marks on the far side. Now that we have both our main spars glued in place, we're going to take the tip of our barbecue skewer and we're very, very lightly going to put the tip of our barbecue down just through the top layer of paper on our score cuts for our wing. We're not going to push this all the way to the bottom surface of the wing. We just want to basically tell the foam where it's going to crease on the top. Now that we've put those score marks through there, we're going to slowly fold this over and we're going to let the wing slowly take shape into an airfoil. Now, as we do a test fold for this, it's gonna be very important that the area that lies over the spar is parallel to the bottom surface of the wing. This is gonna give us the airfoil that we want and make it match up with the other side. That looks really good. I can feel already pressing against the back rear spar. Once we're happy with that, we're just gonna do a little bit of a reinforcement by pushing a bead of glue right into these score cuts all the way down. 
Once we have that glue in, we're gonna repeat this fold one more time. And what I like to do is go down, press firmly against this bar, make sure it's where it's supposed to be, count to five, lift up, and then right back down again. What this is basically doing is giving us the airfoil shape that we need for our scout without quite yet gluing it to the spar. Now that we've let that dry, you can see that we have a nice airfoil shape and it's locked into our main piece right here. It's very important for this next step that we make sure we have plenty of hot glue on our glue gun. We're gonna put a bead of glue on the leading edge, on both top pieces of our spar, and our trailing edge. So let's go ahead and do that now. We'll start with the leading edge here. Nice, healthy bead of glue. I definitely recommend having a larger glue gun that can handle large amounts of glue without cooling down. There we go. And then we're gonna take this down to the table. I'm gonna focus my hands right over the main spar with my fingertips, and then I'm gonna let my palms rest right over the trailing edge spar. What we should feel is right where our palms are as I lay down, you should feel that resistance, but we don't wanna push down hard and crinkle the wing. So just lay down your hands. The trailing edge is meeting up against the back of the table nicely. I can feel the pressure against the trailing edge spar, and we're gonna hold this for about a minute. All right, a minute's passed, and a good way to tell to make sure that you have a nice strong glue joint is that your trailing edge isn't lifting up in anywhere that you see here. If it does lift up in any areas, make sure you put a bead of glue down and hold that down until it's fully dry. Let's go ahead and put this aside for now, and we'll do the exact same process on the other wing half. Again, we're gonna start with the trailing edge. We're gonna make sure that the paper side is facing out towards the trailing edge of the bottom surface of the wing. We're gonna do a quick practice fold. We're gonna do a quick practice fit just to make sure everything lines up nice. Rotate it 180. And a bead of glue to glue it down. Next we'll do our main spar. And for the test fit, we're gonna make sure our servo hole, the center notch, and all of our etch marks line up. So we'll line up our main spar between the etch marks, line up our notch and the servo hole. And once everything lines up good, we'll flip it over 180 and we'll glue it down. Next we'll take our barbecue skewer and we're just going to press through the very top layer of the paper, opening that square up ever so slightly. And we'll fold it over nice and slowly, making sure that the top surface of our wing over the spar is parallel to the bottom and also that the trailing edge lines up with our wing spar. Once we're happy with the fit, We'll lock in the airfoil with a bead of glue right over our score cut. Fold it over. And we'll count to a five. One, two, three, four, five. Release. Bring it back down. One, two, three, four, five. And release. And then finally hold it down. Now that the airfoil is locked in, we're gonna apply a bead of glue on the leading edge, the tops of our spars. And finally, the trailing edge. I'm gonna fold this over 180 degrees. We're gonna let the palms of our hands rest over the spar, and this time our fingertips press down on the rear trailing edge, making sure that the top surface of the wing makes full contact with both our spars and the rear trailing spar. And now that it's fully dried, we're gonna check and just make sure that the trailing edge is fully down, and also that the top surface of the wing and the bottom surface of the wing are parallel to each other. Our next step now that we have both of our wing halves built is we're gonna go ahead and join the bottom wing halves with a piece of tape. And this is gonna help us hold the wings together as we establish our dihedral and ultimately glue it together. I always like to take my time, make sure that these are pressed nice and tight together, and then we'll press the tape down. Now that we've done this, you can see that our wings are gonna kinda of open up like a book and we can place glue down right inside of them and then fold it together. This dihedral gauge is gonna go at the far wing tip and we're gonna raise this up and that will give us the proper amount of dihedral for the center section here. Now that we have all of our pieces in place and we've tested out our dihedral, we can fold this over 180 degrees. We'll take our hot glue gun, we're gonna put a nice heavy thick bead of glue all the way along the perimeter. 
Don't worry if you get a little excess, we can use a scrap piece of foam later to scrape that off. Just doing one side here. Now we can open it back up like a book. We're gonna line up that trailing edge here very carefully. And we'll put our dihedral gauge in. Take a scrap piece of foam right over the top. Wipe off any excess. While we're holding this down, I'm gonna place a healthy bead of glue right on the top surface of the wing. All the way down. And I'm gonna take a nice fat piece of scrap foam and smear it down in. We're gonna let this dry for at least a couple minutes and not disturb it until we can pull out our dihedral gauge and nothing moves. All right, a couple minutes has passed by here. We're gonna reinforce this whole piece now with an additional piece of two inch packing tape. Right over the center here. Fold that around to the bottom. And we'll fold this piece over here as well. All right, friends, the FT Scout XL wing is now done. We're ready to move on to our next step in the build video process, and that's gonna be our radio installation with the power pod and also the main servos. As I mentioned before in the opening, even though this wing is meant for the Scout XL, the build process for many of our XL designs that will be coming out in the future will be exactly like this. So you may see this video in other models, not necessarily the Scout XL. Thanks for building with me, and I'll see you in the next video.